what we are going to show now is how to write a Java class that does something and then show its results through a JSP. So the way Java architecture is that JSPs are used for display and the actual business logic goes into the Java code. Java code is never written inside JSPs. So first of all, let us create some Java code. SRC is the place, as I said, where the Java code goes. What we will do is right click here and say new. And first of all, we're going to say package. Packages are basically folder structures that help organize your classes. So you might want to put all your display related classes together, your database related classes together, uh, your business logic or bean, bean classes together. You can design your own architecture. There are several patterns which can tell you how to group stuff together. For now, what we're going to do is just create a package called com dot first project dot b. So this is kind of a naming convention that we use. If you desire whatever your project name is, that is second com is first, that's kind of the naming convention. And then you uh, come up with a company name, you come up with bean and DAO and wrapper and whatever. So we create a package. Now package is basically, as I said, just a directory structure. So I'm going to show you what happens when I say finish. First of all, what happens is it shows you something like com.firstproject.bean. Now I'm going to show you the directory structure. If you see the directory structure that is in display here, we have user workspace, which is pretty much where all our uh, projects go. First project is our project name. We have SRC and then we have com first project B. So basically these are all directories that have been created under SRC. That's the way packages work. Let's get back to Java. So since we have a package called com first project bean, we're going to say right click new and then we're going to create a class here. So I'm going to call this class my first class. Say finish. Now, meanwhile, there are a lot of options here. You could say a public class. A public class is pretty much visible from everywhere. And then you could do it as an abstract class. You could do it as a final class. I'm not going to go into all the details here. That's all completely uh, Java syntax related. You could pretty much extend interfaces and you could add a main method. So an IDE basically helps you uh, write pseudocode, write template code so that you can just concentrate on the important stuff. So let's just say finish. What it has done is it's basically set package com.firstproject.bean, public class, my first class, author Mahesh that's uh, inherited and then it puts nothing inside it. It's just a blank class. What we're going to do is we're going to add a method here and then we're going to see how to import that class and run the method from the JSP. What we see is the first my first class class which has one method it has add strings and then it accepts two parameters s1 and s2 and all it does is basically add a hyphen in between the strings we're going to see how we can use this in a JSP now what I have also done is write a JSP that uses that class so the way it is done is you import the class into the JSP so you say com dot first project dot bean dot star that basically means that import all the classes in this package and then I instantiate my class, which is my first class class equal to new. And then I use that object. So this is a class. This is an instance of the class. An instance is also called as an object. So my class is, is an instance or my class is an object. So this is a big source of confusion. What is a class and what is an object? So object is an instance of a class. So class is right here. and object is here and then on the object you can invoke properties or methods now in this case add strings is a method which accepts two arguments and then 
you final it is assigned to this variable s and then out dot print ln s so ultimately when you run this you would expect to see something like united hyphen states now how do you run this that is the key question okay now before we run it we need to go through the directory structure once more see this web in what we need is basically a directory called classes under it now you will create it this way click on first project right click and save properties when you are here go to your java compiler and that's pretty much what it is 1.4 don't need change anything let's go back to java build path this is the important thing it's the fourth option java build path and what you're going to do here is click on source and this tells you where your java source code is and where you want the output of your java source code to go now what is the output of java source code class file so your dot java is your source code and your dot class is your class file so right now it's going into build slash classes what we're going to do is we're going to change this we're going to say browse web content webinf and we want to create a new directory under webinf called classes and once that is done hit ok so this is changed to saying first project web content webinf classes and then hit ok and then it says the output folder has changed you want to remove the old location etc etc say yes now what has happened is your webinf it doesn't show it here but that classes directory has actually got created now what we are going to do is say right click on the first project and we are going to build actually it doesn't do it because the auto build is actually set up let's take out the auto build and then right click and say build project so it still doesn't show it but we will be able to see it if we go to our explorer so what happens is we are in our explorer and I'm going to back up a little till I get the first project folder click on web content webinf we're going to see classes and under classes look here we have com first project bean and this is where your first class dot class is sitting so your compilation has worked and your class file is sitting right here now what we are going to do is we're going to switch to the JSP this JSP is supposed to run now but before it does you have to go back to debug mode switch off your server I clicked on debug click here stop the server and then start it back so when you start your server back it's going to start up nicely and then go back to local hot it's right here it's uh, basically your browser I'm going to refresh the page and what has happened is it set my first line and gave the date but it also did united hyphen states so that part is actually coming from your java program Isn't that cool